the wall of manufacturing. How symbiotic technologies can reduce environmental impact. Ichiro Inasaki, Chubu University, Keio University. 21 years ago, I was in Japan as a university professor. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The title of my talk is Breaking the Wall of Manufacturing. What I'm going to talk about is some challenges to attain green or sustainable manufacturing. Manufacturing is a lifeline for those countries, such as Germany and Japan, who do not have adequate amount of natural resources. Therefore, in order to survive, we, achieved, we have achieved significant development in manufacturing in terms of producing high-quality products and high productivity. Let me to start with very quickly look over the past progress in manufacturing. <clears throat> First, automation. Thanks to this development, we can significantly reduce the human intervention. We, if we look at the uh, development in manufacturing accuracy, it started from the order of millimeters, and we are now going on to the order of nanometers through micrometers. That means we are approaching the uh, limit of the machining process in terms of the chip thickness because this region is already the size of molecules. If we look at the uh, development of uh, productivity, today we are able to machine or cut the steels with the uh, cutting speed of several hundred meters per minute or even higher. This is, of course, thanks to the development of cutting tool materials and machine tools. However, I think from the beginning of 1990, <clears throat> environmental impacts has become a big issue. When we talk about the environmental impact of products, most of the case, we pay attention to the, for instance, energy consumption of, uh, on, uh, in their on-duty phase. However, energy is also consumed in the production phase. Therefore, many manufacturing engineers are now concerned with the reduction of energy waste and emission from the factory. <clears throat> in fact, uh, therefore, there is a very uh, strong demand to, uh, to, to reduce the uh, environmental impact. However, as I mentioned, there is a very difficult dilemma, or I would say conflict, between the productivity and the sustainability. If you want to uh, improve the sustainability, most of the case, it results in the decrease of productivity. But any manufacturing technology which reduces the productivity cannot be accepted in the factory. We have to solve this dilemma. Uh, 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 by the uh, uh, technology innovation. In fact, it was 1994. I was uh, appointed one, as one of the auditors with several German professors, uh, for instance, Professor Hans Kurt Stenzel from uh, Leibniz University, sitting over there, uh, to assess the uh, R&D activities of a certain German automobile company. And at that time, I found that the company was making many efforts to attain sustainable manufacturing. If we look at the uh, car production, machining process represented by cutting and uh, grinding consumes a large amount of uh, energy. <clears throat> Those machining processes are conducted in the factory. In the factory, there are many environmental issues at different scales, starting from the factory to the process. Let me start uh, with the, uh, from the factory. It is strongly demanded to control the temperature in the factory and keep it constant, because there are many machine tools in the factory, and the thermal deformation of the machine tools is uh, today the main reason for the machining error. However, in order to uh, control the temperature in the factory, we need, well, we spend a uh, high amount, highly amount of energy. 
To solve this problem, for instance, this company built the uh, factory underground. In this example, the factory uh, is built about uh, 70 meters underground, taking advantage of very stable temperature there. As a matter of fact, as you see, the temperature inside could be uh, controlled at 20, 23 degrees centigrade, regardless of the variation of the outside temperature between 10 to 26 degrees. As a result, the uh, total energy consumption could be uh, reduced by more than 80%. <clears throat> Another example with respect to the factory is the application of solar energy, but I don't think it's necessary to explain in detail because this is already very common. Well, uh, let's move on to the next scale, which is uh, the uh, machine tools. Machine tools also consume a large amount of uh, energy. This shows the uh, electric power change uh, over time axis. Therefore, the uh, area or integral is the energy consumption. Uh, there are two uh, conceivable strategies to reduce the energy consumption. One is, of course, to reduce the machining time or operation time. That can be achieved by introducing high-speed machine tools, but I don't touch upon today this issue. Uh, the another approach is to reduce the power consumption of a machine tool itself and uh, several peripheral devices. <clears throat> One of the interesting ideas to reduce the uh, energy consumption of a machine tool is to downsize the machine tool structure. Thanks to this, uh, the floor space of the machine tool could be reduced to half of the conventional uh, size, and as a result, total uh, electric power consumption was reduced by more, uh, around 20%. By the way, the reduction of the floor space of machine tools is very attractive in Japan because uh, the land price is very expensive in Japan. Well, let's move on to the next scale, which is uh, process. <clears throat> the uh, cutting fluid supply pump consumes a large amount of energy, in this case, around seven, uh, 30%. There is a very, uh, therefore, strong demand to reduce the amount of cutting fluid supply. Uh, besides, there is also the strong demand to attain a clean, a clean working environment. Furthermore, the uh, cutting fluids may contain some harmful uh, components. Uh, the ultimate goal to reduce the cutting fluid supply is, of course, the dry cutting without any cutting fluids. But the application of the uh, dry cutting is very limited because uh, of the excessive tool wear and poor cutting performance. The alternative to the uh, dry cutting is the near-dry cutting. Sometimes it's called MQL, which stands for Minimum Quantity Lubrication Cutting. <coughs> However, as you see on the right, there is a very difficult problem to be solved. That is the chip, chip deposition on the machine tool table. Chips are very hot, resulting in the thermal deformation of the machine tools. I will touch upon later on uh, this again. The amount of the uh, cutting fluid supply in dry, uh, near dry cutting is extremely small. Uh, as you see, uh, it is uh, one part per several 10,000 of the conventional uh, flood cutting. Of course, we need some uh, special equipment to uh, conduct near-dry cutting. Uh, this is the main part. Uh, very small amount of oil droplets uh, are supplied to the cutting point uh, with pressurized air through the uh, main spindle of the machine tools and the cutting tools. Uh, as a matter of fact, the near-dry cutting uh, has, has been uh, today very uh, uh, broadly applied, uh, has found a very uh, broad application. And uh, uh, for instance, some portion of those car components are practically machined with near-dry cutting today. Thanks to this uh, uh, technology, the uh, cutting fluids related costs uh, could be reduced to one third, uh, to the one third of the conventional uh, uh, flood cutting. About 50% of this reduction is thanks to the uh, reduction of the uh, power consumption uh, of cutting fluid supply pump. 
Well, let, let me very quickly introduce you some of my uh, small contribution to the uh, near dry cutting. Uh, uh, we could develop a uh, uh, cutting fluid which, is, which shows very good performance for near dry application. We uh, made such an equipment to, to uh, develop the uh, cutting fluid. Uh, the, uh, we can measure the uh, cutting uh, uh, lubricant adsorption of the machined surface and the cutting force simultaneously in this uh, chamber. The uh, developed oil has uh, shown very good uh, performance and well accepted in the industry and uh, today uh, 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 commercially available. It is basically a synthetic ester having very high biodegradability. Well, of course, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, there uh, are some problems to be solved. One is the chip evacuation. Uh, on the right, you see the uh, chip evacuation device. Uh, the uh, chips are evacuated through this, uh, sorry, this, it doesn't work, through the uh, clearance. And also, the structure of the machine tool itself should be reconsidered uh, to make uh, chip transportation much smoother. Well, uh, let me lastly uh, touch upon the uh, wastes from the uh, factory. There are three major wastes from the factory, uh, cutting uh, tools, uh, cutting fluids, and wastes. Wastes are most of the case recycled in the factory. So I will talk about uh, cutting tool first. Uh, today, tungsten carbide is a mostly used material for the cutting tool application. However, in order to uh, obtain 100 kilogram tungsten carbide, uh, we need such a huge amount of uh, uh, raw material. However, if we once look at the uh, use of the cutting tool, we recognize that uh, only a small portion of the cutting edges are used, and the main body uh, remains at its initial state. So therefore, the recycling uh, must be very promising. As a matter of fact, this idea has already been put into practice. The last example is the uh, cutting fluid, but I don't think it's necessary to explain because this shows uh, already uh, everything. Uh, that is uh, to say, mobile reconditioning of uh, the uh, cutting fluids. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> uh, in order to attain sustainable manufacturing, we have to uh, consider or pay attention to uh, the uh, entire life cycle of the uh, product, starting from the raw material, uh, components, uh, products, and uh, uh, the waste. In addition to this, what is very uh, necessary is to consider the flow uh, the other way around. That may be called inverse manufacturing. I think this uh, concept is very important. Uh, of course, we need some new technologies, such as uh, uh, design for uh, recycling, design for disassembly, uh, design, uh, uh, segregation of materials and others. However, through the uh, combination or integration or even the fusion of those two flows, I believe that uh, we can uh, enhance the uh, sustainable development. Well, uh, I would like to close my talk saying that uh, the manufacturing uh, is a principal means by which wealth is created. Thank you.